What's going on YouTube? Welcome back to another video. So we have the S4 out and then we have my buddy brought his B8.5 S4. So we're gonna do a little comparison video for you today. We're gonna go over the things to look for when buying your B8 or B8.5 S4. So on the left, we have my B8 S4 2011, and on the right, we have a B8.5 S4 as well. I think this is a 2015. 15, sweet. Uh, so basically, you can already tell some of the slight differences. All right, so starting out on the front, the B8, we have this kind of these kind of headlights. Basically, they're like the first gen R8, where they have the uh, LED dots that kind of curve up like a little little wink looking thing. And then we have fog lights down here that are circles. Uh, the grill is kind of like the old B7s where it's got this uh, sharp edge up here. Uh, and then we'll move over to the B8.5 where we can show you the difference. So the headlights on the B8.5 are much more aggressive. They have a solid LED bar that follows this trim here. And then the fog lights are a nice and subtle uh, LED kind of square. And then the grill is a little more rounded up at the top. It doesn't have that sharp edge like on the B8s and it kind of curves up and goes all the way around. So it's a little bit harder to tell because both these S4s are modified uh, by their diffusers and they he has a trunk lip, I don't anymore. But the main differences between the B8 and the B8.5 is gonna be uh, in the back end, it's gonna be the tail lights and then the stock diffuser. Uh, we don't have a stock diffuser to show you, but the stock one does not have these aggressive blades in the back and it's not carbon fiber. Another difference is gonna be the tail lights. When my car lights up, you can kind of tell, see if I can do it, it's gonna be that LED square, you can kind of tell. And then at night, this just the whole square is lit up. As for the B8.5, uh, much more aggressive tail lights, kind of like the headlights where at nighttime, there's a bar that lights up here and it's solid red, it looks really good. And then the stock diffuser uh, is a little bit different than the B8 as well. I'll link that one here. Uh, but you can tell that the aftermarket diffuser, these are both ECS tuning, they're very similar, and they kinda make the B8 and the B8.5 look more alike. Now for looking for either a B8 or a B8.5, there's some packages that you can get from Audi that will change the exterior look of the vehicle. Uh, the titanium package, which will include uh, these rotor wheels, which you can get on both the B8.5 and the B8, uh, the titanium package will also give you, instead of the aluminum trim around uh, the windows, you will be getting uh, all blacked out trim. And then I believe you also get uh, black or paint matched uh, mirror covers. Up front with the black optics package or the titanium package, uh, you can get a black grill from factory and it's for both the B8 and the B8.5. Uh, it's definitely a really cool package to look for because not that many B8s or B8.5 S4s have it. So when you uh, pick your B8 S4 or your B8.5 S4, there's another pack, two packages that you can look for. Premium Plus, which is this guy over here, and then we have a Prestige on the left. Uh, you really can't tell too much from the factory, the differences from the outside, other than the fact that a Prestige will have these wheels, these are the uh, peelers. Um, those are the titanium wheels, as on the black optics or the titanium package. But these peelers are commonly found on a Prestige S4. You can also get them from factory on a Premium Plus, but another option on the outside of your S4 that you can find is blind spot monitoring. So this is a really cool feature that unfortunately my car does not have being a Prestige, but this is a really cool feature that you can find on your S4. So there are not too many uh, packages or differences from a B8.5 and a B8 S4 uh, that you can pick from other than Premium Plus, Prestige, and then there's the Titanium or Black Optics package. So look for those things, they're all really cool to help decide what S4 is for you. So moving on to the interior of the B8 S4. So the B8 came with a rounded steering wheel. Depending on your in, your seats, mine are the red leather. Uh, I have, so I have red stitching on my shifter and my steering wheel. So depending on what your interior has, whether you have the Alcantara seats, uh, you can also have black leather, you can have white leather, and if you're lucky enough, you can find them in the Nagaro blue leather seats. Uh, all those stitching will, or all the stitching will match your seat colors on the steering wheel and the shifter. So some of the major major differences on the inside of the B8 versus the B8.5 is we have a rounded steering wheel. Uh, the airbag is also this kind of weird like pentagon shape. 
And then another difference is gonna be the shifter. We have this kind of really funky 1970s, 1980s like American car shifter looking thing. Uh, it doesn't bother me too much, but it is just a difference between the B8.5 and the B8. Another couple small differences is this car has drive select. So my uh, controls are gonna be all right here for controlling that. And I will show you on the B8.5 where that is located. Another big difference between the B8 and the B8.5 is gonna be the MMI system. So this is the 3G MMI. The B8 ha B8.5 has a 3G, M or 3G plus MMI. So what that means is basically, oh, you can't really see it, but basically the MMI system on the B8 is extremely outdated. Uh, the only thing it really lets you do with today's modern phones is connect for phone calls. Uh, so that's Bluetooth. Um, there are some dongles and some little things that you can plug into the factory connection so you can play your own music. Uh, I do have one of those. It's a little glitchy every now and then, but the sound quality is still really good. So it's definitely not something that would keep me from buying a uh, B8, but it's definitely something to consider. So now we are in the B8.5 and you can already tell the steering wheel is way better. Uh, we have a flat bottom steering wheel down here. Uh, nice and a little bit thicker leather as well as the rounded steering wheel which makes it look way more updated and uh, much nicer. Moving over to the shifter as I mentioned before, this shifter looks absolutely better. Uh, it says S4 right on top, you have your control right here to let you select between gears, uh, between park, reverse, neutral and drive. Uh, you have a different function over here so you have drive and sport mode and then you also can move the car over to the side uh, to do the paddles. Now, as I was talking before, the drive select is here. It's a single button that will select between individual, comfort, auto, and dynamic. Uh, whereas my car had arrows and you could just cycle through and pick the right one. Another smaller difference between the B8 and the B8.5 uh, is gonna be the, uh, basically the blinker controls over here. Not too big of a difference, but it is just a different shape. Uh, totally feels the same, totally in the right, the exact same spot, uh, easy to reach on both the B8 and the B8.5. So on his B8.5 S4, he has the carbon trim on the inside. So we have that on the doors here. We also have carbon trim by the shifter down here, super nice. And it's gonna be up on the dashboard up there and on every single door as well. As for my S4, I have the aluminum trim on the doors the shifter, the dash, and all the other passenger doors. Another small difference is gonna be the gauges. So you can see these gauges here. Uh, my speedometer goes up to 200 miles an hour, and the numbers are kind of gapped a little bit different than the B8.5. And over here on the B8.5, you can see that the increments on the speedometer uh, are a little more spaced out, a little more cleaner, and it only goes up to 160. So another option on the interior of your S4, whether it's a B8 or a B8.5, is gonna be the Bang & Lofsen sound system. So this sound system from the basic factory one that you can get, which I believe is Bose, and then the upgraded B&O sound system is a complete difference. The B&O sound system is absolutely perfect, and the only thing I had to do was upgrade my subwoofer, and the stock speakers and amplifier have been able to provide efficiently and like no problem whatsoever, I completely Love to blast my music with my windows up and just enjoy the music. And uh, I'm super satisfied with the Bang & Olufsen sound system. Another thing to look for when you're picking out your S4 is whether you want a DSG or a manual. So both these S4s are DSGs. They're, it's an absolutely fantastic transmission. You get these nice paddle shifters which have a really good tactile feel. Um, whereas a lot of people are true enthusiasts and are diehard manual drivers. So there is an S4 out there for you whether you want a manual or a DSG. So another option to look for between your B8 and your B8.5 S4 is gonna be whether it has drive select and the sport differential. So both cars that we have here today have both those options, but if you are unsure if your S4 has it, you can find out right here whether it's on the B8 or the B8.5. So we have our selecting here, which is gonna be auto, dynamic, individual, or comfort. Uh, the B8.5 just has that single button. And if you are unsure if you have the sport diff, and it's kind of hard to tell a lot of the time, some, manu some uh, car dealerships say they have it when a car doesn't, the most efficient way I have found is gonna be to get under the rear of the car here, look for your differential. My exhaust is in the way, so we will go over to the B8.5. 
So it's kind of hard to tell because we both have aftermarket exhaust systems, but if you look underneath where your rear differential is, kind of right up there on the back, you will see a red connection. Uh, that is gonna signify whether you have a sport differential or not. The sport differential completely changes the driving experience. So that is something that when I was looking for my B8 or B8.5 S4 was a must need. A lot of enthusiasts will tell you that that differential makes or breaks the drive in these S4s. It's gonna be the keyless access and keyless uh, start. So basically I can lock my car and unlock my car from the without even having to touch my key. I can also get in the car and start it with this nice push button start uh, right here, same as the B8.5s. Unfortunately, if you don't have this option, you'll have to start your car up here by putting in the, uh, the key kind of remote thing in there. That was definitely one of those little convenience factors, but it was definitely something that I really wanted to kind of make the whole driving experience a lot easier, a lot simpler, so I didn't have to worry about getting my key out every time I was trying to get in my car. I could just walk up, get access, and just, just drive the car. So those are gonna be the main differences on the interiors between the B8 and the B8.5. Uh, hopefully that kind of narrows down your search for whether you wanna get a B8 or B8.5 and helps you decide uh, which kind of interior trim you want, whether you want the carbon trim or you want the aluminum trim like on my B8 S4, or you, whether you want red seats or if you want Alcantara seats or if you want black leather seats. There's so many different options, so many different configurations. So I hope that that kind of interior rundown helps you decide. And to kind of tie this video all together, when you're searching for your S4, there is a good chance you're gonna find one with modifications. So after you've found your S4 with all the options you want, it's a titanium edition, it's got the Bang & Lofsen sound system, keyless entry and access, it's got the sport diff, the drive select, it's got all the options, super nice S4. Uh, there's a good chance there's gonna be one that's modified. So we're gonna go over uh, some of the small things to look for when you are buying an S4 that may have some modifications that you're unsure of. So as you can see, both these S4s here have a lot done to the outside. Uh, he's got an aftermarket grill, aftermarket front lip, and those fog, those fog insert kind of covers right there. All carbon fiber, super nice, as well as my S4. I blacked out the headlights, aftermarket RS grill, front lip. I've got side skirts, I've got big brakes, exhaust, diffuser, yada, yada, yada. When you're looking for your S4, there are some good modifications. Everything on the exterior of the car uh, doesn't really increase the value, but it's definitely something nice to have. As far as engine performance modifications, there are some modifications that are totally fine that you don't have to worry about. An intake, exhaust, really isn't gonna do too much to hurt the engine. Uh, it's definitely a plus to have, but uh, just keep that in mind. It's not something to totally worry about. However, a lot of these cars are dual pulley or single pulley. Uh, that's gonna produce a lot of heat. Uh, that can lead to intercooler failure, it can lead to catalytic converter failure. So those are some of the modifications that you wanna consider. Is it worth to have all this stuff? Because the longevity, uh, it's gonna be more expensive, it's gonna be more of a race car, it's gonna make more power, but you're gonna have more risk with it. So whether you get a B8 or a B8.5 S4, the performance is identical. There's small difference in the, the gear ratios, which don't make the cars that much different in speed, but the engine is still the same 3.0, supercharged, V6, same platform, same all-wheel drive system, so you don't have to worry about too much there. Uh, he has got some really nice carbon fiber upgrades on his engine bay. Uh, he's got this like rocker panel thing here. We got carbon engine covers, uh, nice CTS intake, bunch of other little things, super nice build on the engine, whereas mine just looks kind of boring, kind of stock. Um, but again, there are some modifications that are totally fine to have on your S4, and then there, there, there's those others such as uh, Crank pulleys, supercharger pulleys, stuff like that. You kind of want to, kind of want a second thought. Uh, is it going to last long? Am I going to start blowing out my cats? Am I going to blow out intercoolers? So that kind of upgrade, I would definitely consider. Is it something that you want? Is this going to be your weekend car, or is this going to be your daily, where you kind of just want to keep the car mostly stock? As far as the mileage goes, my car is 104,000 miles, and he, I think he's at like 30 some thousand miles. So. Really low mile car, really high mile car. So basically these engines are pretty solid. The timing chain issue that a lot of people complain about with the older S4s like the V8s, uh, it's not really a big deal on these cars. These cars have 
uh, much better design. Timing chains will eventually need to be done just because it's an inherently worn out item. The guides are plastic typically and they wear out, they get looser over time, same with the chain. So that is something that you have to replace, but it's not as common as the old V8s where it was like 100,000 miles, oh no, time to do timing chains, 10 grand later. Now these will last you, I have seen cars at 180,000 miles on their S4, which is completely crazy and haven't even had done timing chains. So that's something not to worry about too much. There are some smaller things, like I said, the cats uh, and the intercoolers if the car is heavily modified. Another smaller thing that actually happened to me was down here we have our crank pulley. Now around 60 to 80,000 miles, whether you're modified or not, that crank pulley tends to snap and the outer ring will break causing total belt failure and belt material will fly all over your engine bay. Uh, it's not totally catastrophic to the engine unless you're like racing and you, this happens while you're doing like 7,000 RPM. Uh, typically, just breaks the belts, car shuts off. Uh, you will have to get your car towed, but it's typically not too expensive of a repair. So another maintenance thing to look for when you have your S4 is every 30,000 miles or so, you're gonna wanna change your DSG fluid and filter. Uh, that is gonna be about a thousand dollar service. Um, Definitely want to check to see if that has been done to the S4 before you purchase it. If not, maybe work out a deal with the shop or with the owner to kind of figure out a way to uh, get that service done.